We are pleased to have Dave Homan, uh, the Executive Vice President, Managing Director of Demand Side Media at Nielsen, uh, join us. Uh, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Well, let's start off with uh, one of our icebreakers. We'd like to ask everybody, uh, what was your first job and, and what lessons did you take away from it that applied to your career? So uh, I joined the Marine Corps right out of high school, and I would say that was probably the defining uh, lesson that I learned. Um, in addition to you know, self-motivation and self-discipline, I think the, the thing that I've carried through my career most is servant leadership. Um, you know, the, the idea that you're only as fast as your slowest team member, that you know, training, collaboration, and cooperation is key, and that as a leader, your job is to set a vision, provide the resources that are necessary for your team to do their job, um, remove the barriers that get them get in the way of their being able to do their job and then getting out of their way and letting them do it. And that has served me really well uh, in my career. Uh, it's fantastic. And I know our, uh, our leadership team at Cross Green, we're always passing around uh, any book about mi military leadership. I think the uh, Extreme Ownership series has been uh, one we've been reading a lot lately. So I'm sure that, that has served your team well. Um, how did you get your start in the Convergent TV space? So uh, my, my career sort of took a path based on opportunities that presented themselves. I'm somebody that looks as an opportunity as an open door, and I kind of want to find out what's on the other side before uh, the door gets slammed in my face. Uh, my first job out of the Marines when I left was uh, working for a super regional bank, and um, I got involved in database marketing in that regard. Um, from there, uh, my career moved from a couple of different client-side uh, businesses into the agency space. And then I was ultimately hired by Nielsen um, to come and run the agency business, and that then expanded into demand-side media. Well, that's tremendous experience. I mean, obviously seeing both the uh, you know, demand side and then you know, Nielsen, obviously the, the you know, core currency of the, the supply as well. You know, what have you seen as the kind of biggest changes in the uh, video ad marketplace? I think the biggest change is the uh, explosion of different video platforms, right? And, and for a variety of reasons, you know, in the 80s, you had the advent of DVRs and then uh, in the, or actually cable companies and cable news in the 90s, you had DVRs in the early 2000s, um, you know, that was becoming more and more prevalent so that time shifting became something that we had to deal with. Um, and then with, you know, the end of the 2000s, you had the adoption of mobile devices, smartphones, etc. cetera. Um, add to that the availability of faster broadband. And I think streaming has become kind of the new uh, change. And from a consumer perspective, video is video. They don't make the distinction anymore between, you know, television and digital video and streaming. It's what they want to watch, when they want to watch it, and where it's available. And I think that the changes today are more about live and on demand. And even live programming like sports uh, is often streamed on a mobile device. So, you know, there's this convergence of device and content um, and consumer behavior that's been facilitated by the adoption of technology and broadband services. Excellent, we featured you know, several re recent uh, reports from Nielsen, including the total audience report yeah. and uh, I think your streaming media uh, total streaming minutes uh, recently, you know, how do you, I mean, obviously there's been a ton of, of change, but you know, how has Nielsen adapted to this, this new environment? So um, Nielsen has, has consistently been looking at um, what consumers engage with from both a content and an advertising standpoint. Um, it's just gotten a lot more complicated because of the fragmentation of media, right? Um, advertisers are interested in being able to engage with the consumer where they are. Um, and in order to do that, they need to know what content they're watching and then what kind of ads behave or perform more effectively in different places on different platforms. And so from Nielsen's standpoint, our job really hasn't changed that much. Um, it's just gotten a lot harder. It's a lot more challenging to be able to do that. Ultimately, what we're working towards is cross-media measurement, where you have a consistent and comparable uh, ability to measure what people are engaging with deduplicated at a person level because what you've got um, advertisers wanting to do is to optimize their reach and frequency across all of those platforms and you want media owners to be able to um, effectively have yields optimization and in order to do that you've got to know what people are engaging with and and you know where and 
So Nielsen's uh, measurement towards or movement towards cross-media measurement is being driven by a lot of technological advances internally. You know, one platform, uh, one data architecture, uh, one panel, that's the direction that we're moving so that everything is consistent because the harmonization of all of that data and then the deduplication of all of that data is the only way that you can get to that ultimate goal. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I mean, the biggest trend in, in, in media and something that uh, uh, you know, our definitely user base is excited about. What, you know, kind of what areas of the convergent TV space are you most excited about? And you know, really like in one year and in five years, what do you think we're gonna be talking about uh, as the biggest thing? So I think that you're gonna see um, a, a rapid acceleration towards cross-media measurement in, in you know, measurement that is truly comparable across platforms um, to facilitate that optimization of reach and frequency and yield management. Um, the, the way that I think I'm, what, I, what I'm most excited about is a pilot that we're doing right now with um, advanced video advertising. And we've got you know, all of the major US um, programmers that are engaged in that pilot. And we're talking to advertisers and agencies, particularly those that have um, the av availability of first and third party data um, to be able to do dynamic ad insertion within the entire commercial load on linear TV. I think that is going to be game changing um, for a variety of reasons. And when you think about the changes in the industry, it isn't any longer, you know, different players. You've got broadcasters, cable companies, and streaming services that are all owned by the same company, right? So being able to provide that capability so that a, a user has a seamless experience across devices, across platforms um, that will no longer, you know, get them to a, si a situation where they're fatigued by seeing the same commercial over and over again on different platforms that allows for media owners to uh, optimize, uh, you know, their yield management to have advertisers be able to engage with consumers where they are, potentially even having sequential advertisings across uh, uh, experience or journey um, really kind of excites me about making advertising much more relevant and much more effective. And the reality is that advertising supports a lot of the content that gets developed and shared and distributed, you know, throughout the ecosystem. Without it, I think we have a lot fewer options uh, than we do with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what, you know, as you look to the future, uh, and everyone's really excited about, you know, taking that you know, roughly 16 minutes an hour or so of, of, of national TV time and, and making it addressable. Do you think people look at that as a more of a digital ad or I know that the, the uh, kind of terminology is starting to merge, but you know, one thing that we see is the teams are still, you know, siloed off. Um, are you getting more interest from the, the digital side or, or the more traditional linear planning side? I think that the reality is that centralization of that function in the buying, uh, you know, agencies and advertisers is, becoming more the norm than that separation. I think there's a real um, understanding that consumers don't differentiate uh, by you know, platform or opportunity and why should the industry. Um, you know, as I said, a lot of the different platforms are even owned by the same companies. So you've got buyers now that are doing fluidity buys that are a combination of linear TV and uh, digital and streaming. Um, the, the intent I think is to, again, engage with the consumer where they are and um, on the content that they're, in, that they're most engaged with, with the kinds of ads that they want to see because they're more relevant, rather than bombarding them with the same ad over and over and over again. Um, that's, that's a way to improve the delivery of ads. And I don't think it's a digital or linear conversation anymore. It's a video conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of another big trend, you know, you hear the term, you know, cord cutting or cord shaving. Uh, and, and, you know, a couple of years ago, I know we wrote a lot about um, people shifting to these, you know, virtual, uh, you know, pay TV packages um, and, and kind of that really hasn't materialized, even though they've, you know, they've grown quite rapidly that the, they haven't really offset the, the shift from the traditional pay TV business. Um, what strategy do you think, uh, you know, media buyers and networks should employ to, you know, really handle this, this new environment? 
So I think having uh, sophisticated um, planning tools is incredibly important. I think being able to merge their data, whether it's you know the advertiser's first party uh, point of sale data or um, any kind of engagement data that Nielsen has through our measurement services or even third party syndicated data, to be able to pull that together and plan and buy based on specific audiences, um, behavioral attributes that, they, that they've exhibited, um, and being able to do that both across linear and digital so that you can follow an audience more effectively. Um, I think that's a, a strategy that I'm seeing employed more and more. And you know, data-driven advertising, even in linear TV, is not new for Nielsen. We've been uh, doing data merges with advertisers and agencies uh, between you know, their clients' data or their first-party data and, uh, and our engagement data in order to create both custom and uh, syndicated segments for activation. That's great. You, you answers uh, you know, above talking about the kind of the blending of digital and, and linear and, and really it's you know, centralization. What do you think the biggest uh, areas that uh, you know, media buyers could have in making this shift? Like what are the most immediate steps they need to take? Uh, I think in having clear understanding of uh, the objectives of their their uh, campaign, right? What is it I want to be able to achieve? Um, having a, a strong marketing mix, understanding for channel allocation. You know, I've got increasingly uh, limited budgets in order to achieve my objectives. So where do I get the most bang for the buck? And then putting together a media plan that that delivers ads in the right places. Um, based on what those objectives are and where they've been shown to be most effective um, in, you know, in measurement and in, in previous campaigns. So it's taking what they've learned, using the data that they have and creating uh, a media plan that works across platforms in the most efficient and effective way. Excellent. You know, and you kind of answered above, you know, how you know, Nielsen's taken, you know, leadership role in the, you know, innovation on the addressable TV side, you know, kind of um, anything else you want to add to kind of articulate the overall vision uh, for, you know, for where that's going? Uh, I think really, you know, the way that, um, that a lot of advertisers and agencies are looking at advertising now is rather than filling in with addressable where they can because of the two, you know, two minute avails, there's limited inventory. Um, is in trying to put together a plan that can take advantage of the use of data to be much more effective in targeting their audiences across a multitude of platforms. So the, the vision for being able to do that, again, is, is dependent on consistent and comparable measurement across those platforms. And it needs to be able to be deduplicated at an individual level. So Nielsen's direction in future-proofing um, uh, the measurement capability is being impacted by privacy legislation and a number of, of new um, changes in the environment, the cookie-less web and the elimination of IFPA. It's being able to do in a privacy-safe way, um, both transparently and safely, um, creating um, you know, uh, uh, a comparable transparent measurement that can be used by planners and buyers as well as media owners to really understand what people are engaging with, where they are, and being able to do a like for like comparison. If I'm hitting optimization on linear TV in my marketing mix and I want to find complementary places that will either uh, increase my reach uh, incrementally or uh, improve my frequency management, then how do I do that effectively without that measurement? And that's really the direction that Nielsen is going. And I'm excited about the changes that are coming because if you look at a timeline of technology change and measurement change, you know, there was a set it and forget it mentality from, you know, a few decades ago to change that is almost impossible to keep pace with. So looking out towards where the industry is going and developing for that, I think, is what I'm most excited about. That's great. And, uh, you know, Nielsen recently announced some, some significant changes to cross-platform measurement and optimization capabilities. You know, kind of, you might give our readers a little bit of background on, on this and kind of the opportunity. Well, it's basically what I was just talking about. It's the changes in the industry that are being driven by, you know, privacy legislation um, and by, um, you know, concerns about 
um, being able to um, re-identify individuals um, using you know personal identifiable information whether it's uh, a device id or you know cookies or a variety of other things those changes are are changing the way that uh, that advertisers can both see where their ads are are being displayed and to whom um, and optimizing against them so again our foundation uh, for fu future proof measurement is, uh, is focused on you know, phasing in a new methodology that ensures comparability, transparency across the parties uh, and the, open, you know, the, the third parties in the open web, um, broadening the coverage of our reporting within personal and connected devices, um, but also fosters more of a resilience in measurement that's not dependent on any one party or any one external source um, that is you know, unreliable as a digital identifier. So it's about being able to identify content, being uh, having an effective um, ID uh, solution, and then putting it together with a measurement system that is on a single platform and is uh, comparable across all of the media types. That's really the, the, the objective of what Nielsen's gonna be doing probably for the next few years. Thanks a lot. My core set of questions. Is there anything else um, we kind of you know covered? You know, be helpful or highlight for for you guys? Um, just that you know, Nielsen's intent here is to continue to do what we have traditionally done in providing the information for the uh, the ecosystem, the industry to operate efficiently and effectively. Um, it, it becomes harder, more challenging, um, but we're committed to doing it in, you know, a privacy safe and transparent way. Excellent. Well, Dave, I really appreciate your time. And I know, uh, you know, our readers are going to love this content and, uh, uh, you know, share it far and wide. So I you know, appreciate your time and, and uh, have a great day. Yeah, thank you for uh, the opportunity to uh, engage. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing more of the, the interviews in this series.